Zo recently, I had some spare time on my hands and I was like, you know what? I feel like rewatching some shows. So I went ahead and I went on Netflix and I saw it. I saw my all time favorite animated movie. Actually, you know what? I take that back. It is probably just my all time favorite movie in general, Boss Baby. But you know, they also happen to have a silent voice and that one's pretty solid as well. For all you longtime viewers of the channel, you'll know that a silent voice holds a very special place in my heart. I've probably realistically watched the movie about half a dozen times, and I've even made a video on it and just basically worshiped the show all around. Fun fact, I just went ahead and rewatched that video. I'm actually quite proud of that video. It did surprisingly well, and it's also just a really well put together video. If you guys haven't seen it, you should probably watch it after you're done watching this. So anyway, I quickly realized when I was rewatching the movie after having rewatched my video on it that there were a lot of things that I just didn't cover in that video. So I figured today would be a perfect day to do a secondary video on a silent voice. I low-key wanted just any kind of excuse to praise this anime even more. So one of the things I did talk about, but I did just want to recap on it a little bit, is this idea of self-hatred. Basically, all the main characters have some form of self-hatred. From Nishimiya to Ishida to even Sahara and Ueno. All these characters struggle with self-hatred for their own reasons. Whether it be being born with a disability, regretting your past, or doing something that is unforgivable. Which is honestly something this show discusses extremely well. One of the biggest questions asked in a silent voice is what justifies forgiveness? As we all know way too well, Ishida was a little shit when he was a kid. He pretty violently bullied Nishimiya for her disability. So what constitutes forgiveness for that? Does getting bullied back for the rest of your life make up for it? What about learning sign language and doing everything in your power to make that person happy? What about just killing yourself? Where is that line of forgiveness earned? I mean, one of the major questions of the movie is does the act of looking for forgiveness in the first place remove your right to be forgiven? I mean, a lot of people would say yes, because doesn't the act of looking for forgiveness in the first place mean you're inherently being selfish? I mean, we see Ishida constantly questioning himself, asking if it's okay to even go see Nishimiya, because he personally doesn't even know if the reason he is there is to earn her forgiveness or simply there to be her real friend, which is where Ueno comes in. You know, I've always actually disliked the character of Ueno in this film, but the more times I've watched this movie, the more I've come to understand her. You see, from the perspective that the movie is told from, you can kind of tell Ishida truly wants to become friends with Nishimiya and isn't simply there out of pity or trying to receive forgiveness for the sins he's committed in the past. So then the movie poses a question. What if we all saw the exact same thing, but this time from an outside perspective? From a character whose mind we can't read and that we aren't always with. From Ueno. She straight up states it herself. Ueno and Ishida really are exactly the same. Ueno feels guilty because she threw Ishida under the bus and basically led him down the path of being ostracized. She committed a lot of the same sins that Ishida committed, but was never really punished. So she frankly feels probably even guiltier. I mean, she absolutely goes out of her way to try and reintroduce Shimada and Ishida. And she clearly wasn't doing it out of malice, but in hope that they could be friends again. Ueno wants to fix what she feels she has broken. Sound familiar? Ueno is meant to be this challenging character. It's easier to forgive someone when you can read their mind, but that's not possible in the real world. Ueno is meant to be a more realistic variation of Ishida. Someone who we see truly wants to be friends with Ishida and isn't particularly looking for forgiveness. That's obvious in the hospital scene, where the last time the two characters interacted, Ishida basically told her to F off. However, here she was, taking care of him being there every day for him. Then once he finally woke up, she took off without saying a word. Ishida had to find out what Ueno did from his mother. Now is it truly possible to forgive? 
Well, I think it depends. We do see Nishimiya forgive Ishida, and Ishida forgive Ueno. However, not everything is happy-go-lucky. We know that even though Hirose and Chimada saves Ishida's life, they don't forgive Ishida. I think partially is because that forgiving Ishida is in part forgiving themselves for being part of the bullying of Nishimiya. But then again, I might just be pulling at straws here because we really don't have that many scenes with those characters. But I think that's an important distinction that this movie draws. So that point was a little bit longer than I meant it to be. I was only supposed to talk about that for like a minute or so. But then again, that's what makes this movie so great. There's just so much packed into so little. Either way, another topic I really wanted to talk about is the movie's ideas of friendship. In particular, we finally get to talk about my favorite character, Nagatsuka-kun. Probably gonna say that horribly wrong, I'm so sorry. Either way, I just love this character to pieces. He is definitely intended to be the comic relief of this anime, but he's also the first character to actually reach out to Ishida. Nagatsuka is ironically probably the most mature character in the anime. He's there to support Ishida because despite hardly knowing each other, Ishida actually stuck his neck out for Nagatsuka, so Nagatsuka basically returned the favor. After that, they start hanging out and we see Ishida struggling to understand why Nagatsuka is being so kind to him and hits him with the question of what is friendship? And Nagatsuka, being super cool, tells him, hey man, that's just how the universe works. Okay, I am paraphrasing, but it does give him a super good answer. You don't need a reason to be friends with someone. It's something that's just not meant to be explained and overthinking won't lead to any results. I'm sorry, but Nagatsuka is like the ultimate homeboy and also just secretly the best wingman ever. Like legit, my first watch through of this movie, he just hit me right in the feels. I mean, even in the bridge scene when Ishida is just, ironically enough, trying to burn all of his bridges with his friends, Nagatsuka straight up says, Hey man, I understand you're upset. Don't worry about it. I know you don't mean what you say. Like, oh man, I'm sorry, but that line gets me every time. I think out of everyone in the anime, the one who truly understands Ishida the most is Nagatsuka. He just shows what it means to be the ultimate friend. Granted, Ishida does kind of treat him like shit on multiple occasions, but that's just a personal minor gripe. I'm just saying, man, I treat you better, Nagatsuka. As long as you're okay with me not saying your name right. So finally, I just really want to harp on the cinematography for a second. Now, I know I've talked about this on many occasions for you longtime viewers of the channel, but I can't just not talk about it. I mean, it's the freaking cream of the crop here. So cinematography is a bit different from art style. A lot of people mistakenly combine the two when talking about anime. What I mean by cinematography is basically where the camera is pointed and operating on a given shot, and how these are laid out in comparison to one another. There's actually a very famous example called the Kuleshov effect, where if you cut a shot of a man smiling next to a pretty girl, you'll think he's a pervert, and if you cut the same shot of the man smiling and add a happy smiling little girl, well now he's a pedo. I think that's how Alfred Hitchcock explains it. Basically this anime does this, but so much more. It plays with a lot of its frames. Most of the anime is focused on the character's feet. That's mostly because this is a sad story and the main dilemma the protagonist has is looking people in the face. So the movie mimics what the protagonist is often looking at. Other people's feet. Unless he has a kink. Which is definitely possible. Interestingly enough, this style is maintained even during the scenes when they're all children. Inferring that even back then, Ishida still had an inferiority complex. Dang, I'm sorry. For some reason, I just kind of feel like I'm really underselling my argument here. Look, the way they block these characters and force the camera to look really puts us in the protagonist's shoes. God damn it, I really didn't mean to make that pun. Basically, through all this gorgeous cinematography, it really helps us understand the mental state of our protagonist, Ishida. And this is all done, by the way, without saying a word. That's why this final scene where he finally meets everyone's eyeline is so powerful despite no words being spoken. It's been this buildup from the cinematography of this anime for this grand moment and it does not disappoint. God, I'm sorry, I just love this movie so much. It does so many things right and is able to talk about sensitive subjects with a ton of care. It's such a powerful movie that the first time I saw it, I was like, that's it. 
I want to be able to create something like that. Something that can so universally pull out these kinds of emotions from other people, while also just being beautiful, creative, and talking about something that's meaningful. One day, I dream of making something as powerful and beautiful as Boss Baby. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I got a new camera, if you can't tell, it should look incredibly different. One second. Yeah. Oh, 7D, how you've treated me so well. Unfortunately, her time has finally come up. She was overheating and, and screwing up a lot, so. It's a 10-year-old camera. I loved her greatly. She will have a nice place on the shelf back there until the end of time. But hopefully this new camera looks probably significantly better, but also isn't like so good that you guys can really see just how ugly I am. Also, please feel free to check out my Patreon because this camera wasn't cheap and I did not have the money for it. I just say, I need your help guys. I'm in debt with some bad people. They're gone. They won't let me leave the room until I make enough YouTube videos to pay them back. Please help me. Either way, a huge thing to my patrons, you guys are my heroes. Please make sure you guys share, like, comment, and subscribe. This is Manny Matt. Make sure you guys say man and go watch that goddamn anime.